You are now listening to the Griot's Black Podcast Network, Black Culture Amplified. Hello and welcome to Acting Up, a podcast that dives deep into TV and film that highlights our people, our culture, and our stories. I'm your host, Courtney Wills, Entertainment Director at The Grio, and today I am joined by the phenomenal Anjanu Ellis Taylor. She was one of my very first guests. She was actually the third guest on this podcast when it launched back in 2021. And since then, wow, has her career just continued to grow and continue to deliver not only fantastic quality, but important work. Um, The latest of which is Origin, written, directed, and produced by Ava DuVernay. And when I tell you this film is just one of the most important pieces of art I've ever seen, um, it's an understatement. So I'm so glad to have her here with me today. Hi, Anjanu. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing really well. Gosh, so much has happened since the last time you were on this podcast. I think then we were talking about Lovecraft and we were talking about the Clark sisters and we were talking about pay equity in Hollywood. Um, And here we are a few years later, you've wrapped up some major nominations for other incredible roles like King Richard, like the Clark sisters. And now you are starring in a project that I just can't imagine anyone else doing the way that you did and that is origin from Ava DuVernay yeah it's been a it's been a journey I the last I say 2022 I I just I was working constantly I was working constantly and then um 2023 I did I did origin the first part of 2023 it's been crazy you know the the strike kind of like through a through a through a big bomb and all of that, you know, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, you know, I I I think that you know, hopefully, we've done something with Origin that will mean something to people that will really mean something to to somebody, um, because uh, we worked our tails off on that thing, and Ava DuVernay, my God, I you know, I hats off, shoes off, <laughs> uh, to her, everything off, you know what I'm saying to what she, to, to her hard work and, you know, her brilliance and, you know, and, and as it's displayed in this film. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that origin, I mean, I've, I've, I've also been a fan of Ava's and of yours and of Nisi's and seen so much from you all, but something about this particular project, it just felt like the biggest strength or the most distinct and unique strength that I find in each of you were just on full display here at the same time, if that makes sense. Like everything just seemed to really click and it was breathtaking and it was breathtaking to see the results of even the story that Ava wrote based on this book cast which I read when it came out and it was so dense that I couldn't imagine what this film would be like other than a documentary and what we got was something extremely unique that I think for me you know cuts to the core of this origin the origin of our hatred the origin of the thing that allows people and peoples to devalue human life and at the same time it was also this like this revelation about the origin of what it means to be human which is to me love and loss that grief and that loss that we watch Ms. Wilkerson go through was 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 almost as eye-opening and important and extravagant to me as and mind-blowing to me as figuring out what the origin of that hatred is. It's like the origin of what links us all was there too. Mm, yeah, that's great. That's great. Andrew, I want to get into number one, what it took for you to jump into the shoes of someone who, I mean, this is, you've, you've played real life people before, but this woman is, you know, here now, this book did not come out long ago. You know, she's right. living and, and working. Um, so I wonder what the approach was 
there. And I also just want to kind of comment, like to me, this was a role where you were very, um, I don't know if it was intentional, but I thought your character was like very sexy. Like the way you were even moving was, I don't know if it's because I was feeling the chemistry between you and your on-screen husband, who <laughs> the very, very, very adorable uh, actor that you all might know um, from The Bear, but it, it just felt, she felt, you know, smart and, you know, she's grieving and all that, but those flashbacks, she was kind of, I don't, like I said, she was like sexy and sensual to me. Did that, yeah. was that on purpose? Did you pick something like that up from her as well? Well, I, I think intelligence is sexy. Um, because you can be, you can be a, in a gorgeous frame and you open your mouth and you got, and dumb falls out. <laughs> I am no longer interested. I am no yeah. longer interested. But yeah, I, I think that intelligence is 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 very, very sexy. And and um Ms. Ms. Wilkerson is, you know, she's a very refined woman. She, you know, she cares about her appearance and you know, she moves through the world with that kind of, you know, um, I think an awareness about uh her appearance and a and a great pride a great pride in that. So that, that, you know, that makes sense. How I came to work versus how I looked on screen are two very, very different things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, John Bernthal is the actor who played, you know, my, my own screen, my own on screen partner. They, they weren't married, but you know, he's, he's, he's lovely, you know, and he, he elicits that kind of response because he's so because he's so lovely and kind and you know catering. Uh, he's all those things. That chemistry between the two of you really bounced off of the screen for me. But I think that authenticity was captured with all of the relationships that we see her move through in this film, including that um, with her cousin who's played by Nisi Nash, it was so relatable. Like I know that woman, that woman is in my life. That woman is in my mother's life. It was, mm -hmm. it was something deeper than just it being present. It, mm -hmm. Those relationships just felt extremely authentic. And I do think that that's always been one of Ava's strength is to humanize anybody in any story that she is taking on. But the way that you all acted with your faces um, and with your emotions in this film was, was like I said, just really breathtaking. You went all around the world for this film. Tell me, um, what was the most challenging location for you? Well, yeah, we went all over the world. We went to India, we went to Berlin, we shot, we shot in uh, down South in Georgia. Um, I would say it, it not, wasn't necessarily challenging, but it was scary. It was a little scary. It was a little scary. We, we shot in this market in New Delhi mm -hmm. and it was where the tuk-tuks were, you know, tuk -tuk, tuk tuks were moving freely. There are no, there are no lines in the road. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's no, there's no stoplights in, the, in this market. You know what I'm saying? It is good luck. <laughs> the principle of survival is good luck. Wow. And, um, and we were filming, we were filming in that. We we actually on in one of the sequences that we shot, like my my tuk tuk hit another one, hit another tuk tuk, you know. Oh. And I, you know, that was a badge of honor. I couldn't wait to tell people, like, yes, I survived. <laughs> the driver probably didn't even miss a beat. He just kept going. No. He just he just busted at the other guy. Have you ever been? Have you ever been to Delhi? I have been once. Yes, I've been to Mumbai and it was easy, right? Yes. They just yeah. bust at each other and keep going. Mm-hmm. Unreal. They bust at each other and keep going. So yes, yes. New Delhi was an experience. You know, it was an experience to see that part of the film as well. I don't think, at least for me, I don't know that people are walking around with the knowledge of what the system is in India still. And I was lucky enough to see you and Ava uh, a week or two ago at a panel that you did at a screening for Origin. And it was at the Museum of Tolerance. And she was talking about the fact that like, no, the scenes you will see in the movie of these people having to clean human excrement with their bare bodies, bare hands, faces covered was not real excrement. But you all 
I mean, those were real people who actually do that. Yes. Um, and you, you, you were somewhere where that was happening. I mean, was that happening in front of your face? No, I didn't. I didn't see that. But yeah, it, it was. I mean, these these the men who I those those the people who did that, they actually did that. Yeah, that is, that is they actually did that. You know, it's it, girl. Listen, it's stunning. It's stunning. It's stunning what we do to each other, you know? It, it's like, so the the idea of caste, so there's a higher caste, there's a middle caste, lower caste, and then there's then there's but what is beneath the lowest caste. And that's 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 who those that's who those men who those men were. And and and, and what this film highlights is what that mentality or what that outlook, what accepting that kind of um, you know, valuing and devaluing of people, that's what it looks like there. What it looked like in, you know, Nazi Germany and what it looks like in 2023 United States or Jim Crow United States, it's all coming from the same thing, the same acceptance or the same lie that we're somehow fed or raised with, you know, that is so ingrained in the ways that our societies are built and the way that we move in them that we often don't even know that we are participating. And I thought that the film did a really beautiful job of in a way showing that everyone is just as guilty and just as innocent in perpetuating this you know, what I would call a, a nightmare, it remains the nightmare of our existence. You know, you can look anywhere. You can look in the Sudan now. You can look at Gaza now. You can look, you know, in, in certain pockets of the United States now and see unimaginable devaluation of human life and a whole bunch of people who feel like they're good and feel like they're not part of that kind of standing by and letting it happen, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do we do with that? Well, I, you know, that's why, I, that's why I wanted to do this film. That's why I wanted to, to be in it because I wanted us to do what you're doing right now, which is ask that question. What do we, what do we do with that? And I think that that, I think Ms. Wilkerson wasn't the first person to write about cast in America. Allison Davies wrote about it. Um, but um, in this um, moment, at least in 2020, was the first that we had heard about it in such a such a public forum that we, mm -hmm. you know, that, that it was a New York Times bestseller, right? So yeah. these ideas are in our popular culture in a way. You know, this was new in that way. Um, and the, like I said, the consideration of caste being in this country, not a new idea, but not one certainly that's saturated. And we assume that the, we know of the caste system in, in India and we associate caste with India, right? But we, yeah. I have never associated the caste system with Nazi Germany. And mm -hmm. I've certainly never, never, never saw the cat at what we are experiencing here in America as a caste system that mm -hmm. is actively, and th this is this is the kicker, that is actively being sustained. Yes. Whether they know that what they're doing is casteism or not, that is what's happening. And I think yes. this moment right now, especially with the elections, you know, what we need to confront is because I think the power of knowing what caste is, we benefit the people who are in the lower caste. We benefit from that knowledge more than anybody. When we see that we are linked with all of these other cultures, uh, countries, when, we, when we're linked and we have an awareness of what is happening, we're better armed to confront it. Because mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't know what's at play, then we're, we're all fighting in our corners. But right. now we know that no, we're 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 linked here, and it serves us. It it serves us to to hold hands in that linkage. I think of this in that an understanding that you know there are folks in this country who want to elect someone not because they are a good leader, 
not because they find probably some of them find him, you know, repulsive, repulsive. He goes against everything they they say that they believe about this country being having integrity, having, you know, moral superiority to the rest of the world. And they they are going they are trying to put this very person back in office and they're not doing it because they think anything other than he can maintain their power. He can maintain their power as white folks. That's it. It really changes your way of thinking about being a citizen of this country because you think, okay, I'm my reasons for going to the ballot box are not the same as theirs. And yet I, I we share a, the same yoke though. Mm -hmm. and, and some may write about that. There was one question that, that, I mean, there are so many moments in this movie that will stay with you long after you see it, I think, that will replay in your mind. And you know, there was something very interesting about watching it at the Museum of Tolerance. That crowd was primarily very mature, very elderly Jewish people who are living in Los Angeles at a very precarious time in the world there were bomb searches of our cars when we parked there was a fire alarm that went off I don't know if you were there on Geneva, but a fire alarm went off right when screening started and I wasn't in the theater yet and I went outside I was like I'm gonna wait until we see what this is and then going in and seeing this movie seeing the representation of Nazi Germany for example it was just so crazy like it was I was looking at the past and these people fearing for their lives for being Jewish in the past. And I was sitting in a room where 10 minutes ago, I was actually sharing in that fear of being in a Jewish space and watching this movie. I knew that this movie could be a target for people who don't want us to wake up, who don't want the status quo to be disrupted, who don't want us to recognize that through line that you were just speaking so eloquently about. And in that way, I was just staunchly reminded how art is activism and how art can be a weapon. And it's a weapon clearly because people are also scared of it mm. and people feel the need to defend themselves against it and prevent messages like the one this film expresses from getting out there and changing people's minds and changing people's actions. Yes. And at the same time, when I see films like this and I think, oh my gosh, I wish I could show it to those five white people I was debating about the summer of George Floyd and they were saying, just show me, just show me real. You know, it's, it's 13th, it's when they see us. Now Origin is right there on that list of, you know, five films I wanna show white folks who think that we are exaggerating. Um, and then I think the people who need to see this, the people who I think's minds might actually be moved. I don't think they're the ones going out to the theaters and buying tickets for origin. And even I discussed that, that when I saw you at the governor's awards, and then I see you on Instagram, somebody caught you in disguise, hanging out, passing out postcards outside of an AMC theater, encouraging folks to see this movie. So you have clearly taken an interest in, in exactly that and getting people to watch this one. What do you think it will take? Well, I wasn't in disguise. I just, <laughs> I still, I just still wear a mask. Cause you know, we live in the world that we live in, you know what I mean? I'm just trying not to catch anything. Um, Good. But um, yeah, I, 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 you know, we, we have been, we've been, we've been ignored, you know, this film has been ignored. Um, I, you know, there are probably, a, you know, some explanations for why that is, you know, we have heard things like, yeah, you know, people think it's homework, people think it's, um, you know, medicine, and, you know, it's a history, Let you know, it's all those things, it's, and, but I think, you know, how is it that someone could hear this premise? It's a film about a scientist who makes bombs. It's a period film about a scientist who makes bombs and no one says, oh, I don't want to go see that. It's a history lesson. I, a true story about a scientist who makes bombs. 
No one says, oh, that's a history lesson. It's a medicine. I don't, I don't want to see that. Nobody has that reaction. It's embraced. It's, 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 and I, this is not about, I'm not, this is not to say anything disparaging about, about that film or the, it's, it's directed. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you think that origin is medicine or you think origin is, is homework, why don't you have that same reaction to Oppenheimer? Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's, there's a disconnect. There's a disconnect there. We've been overlooked but so I, I can't do anything about that, but just go out in the streets and pass out flyers to people and say, come see our film, come see our movie. You know, we, the thing is, is we don't have a huge budget, PR budget. We don't have that. So we ha we're having to do things real grassroots, real mm -hmm. grassroots. Um, and that's what we're, that's what we're doing. And my prayer is, my prayer is when it's in theaters, um, that it takes on a life of its own. You know, it, it, the reality is we probably are not gonna get these awards or whatever, but the film in the being, someone called it the people's movie the other day, when it becomes, when it becomes the possession of the people, then it will, it can do the work that we wanted to, it to do from the start, you know? Yes, yes. And despite those not huge marketing budgets and not huge production budget, this film, I will say it again, is one of the most important ones I have ever seen. And it is also, aside from that, it's just beautiful. It's also just a beautiful, dramatic film. It's a true story about this woman who experienced some tremendous loss. And that in itself was another thing to really behold. So I think there are many, many reasons to go and see this film. Andrew is going to be where I am, Sunday Dance Film Festival. She's staying busy as usual. I never only have one thing to talk to you about. Today we're talking about origin, but I know I'm going to see something from you. I think you executive produced a film called Grace. Am I right about that? Yeah, it's a it's a short film called Grace. Uh, it stars uh, one of my babies from King Richard. Uh, her name is Michaela Bartholomew. I'm there, but I'm there really because of this film I'm in called uh, Exhibiting Forgiveness. Yes, that's on my list too. Cannot yeah. wait to see that. So excited to see that. And um, uh, some people, I don't know if you also put it together that she's also, you've got a cameo in The Color Purple, which is another huge film. And we, we only see you for a minute, um, but that film has sparked conversation from the likes of Taraji about something you and I talked about on that episode so many years ago, where you were telling me that, you know, despite your illustrious career, you couldn't do things for your family that you think someone in your position, we would think someone in your position could. They weren't paying Black women in Hollywood then. And even after all of these awards, all, of, all after these, you know, what feel like flashy black women led films like The Color Purple, we're still hearing those same remarks. And I just wonder for you, the last time we spoke, we were talking about whether or not you thought awards really moved the needle when it came to career. And that's where we got into the conversation about pay equity. Since then, you've been nominated for an Oscar, BAFTA, so many other awards, and we are we are being treated to what is, I don't care whether we see this at the Oscars next year or not, it is absolutely one of the best performances you will see from an actor on screen this year in origin. So now I'm asking you, mm -hmm. you know, three years later and nominations later, mm -hmm. do you still feel like we're in that same boat? I can only speak for myself. I can only speak for myself. You know, it was interesting listening to, you know, to Raji and I, and I, I, I said, you know, black women actors like black people are not monolith. It's not a we're not a monolith. You know, we some of us want, some of us require certain things that you know. Taraji Henson is a superstar. You know, she's a she's a she's black royalty at this point. You know, so what she needs, I don't necessarily need. Taraji wants to be picked up and taken to work every morning. I don't I don't need that. You know, I don't need that. I don't want that. I like being by myself. 
I like having rental cars, you know, because I can go to work when I want to. I don't have to take care of anyone else's feelings. I can listen to my music as loud as I want to. I can call my sister. I can call my, you know, I can just, I can just be, you know, ugly before I get to work. You know what I'm saying? I can be ugly because after getting to work and getting home from work are sacred times for me. So I like the aloneness of that. I so I don't need someone picking me up. She she needs that. She wants, she feels that she needs that for her safety. So I I feel I, I feel that we we want different, we need different things and we need to allow that to be the case that people require, people require different things. Um, in terms of pay, you know, I, you know, the experience that I had with King Richard, I've talked about this you know, a few times I, I, after it was over, I told Will that I didn't get paid enough and he went in his pocket and doubled my pay. Um, and it still wasn't enough, you know, (laughs) it still, it still wasn't enough compared to what my white contemporaries get paid. It's, it's not the same. I think about the fact that someone like Cameron Diaz and a couple of actors who are probably my age and maybe a little younger, that they can retire, that they can say, no, I don't want to act anymore, that I they can retire. I I can't retire. I have to, I got to, I still have to work. I still, you know, I still have people depending on me. There's still things that I need to do. So I have to continue, I have to continue to work. And that shows the gross, you know, inequity in, 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 in pay in our, in our industry. Yeah. Yes. I you know I could talk to you forever, but I know I have to let you go. I'm so excited that I will get to bump into you this week at Sundance, but thank you for your time today on this interview, but also thank you for the work that you poured in to origin that all of you did. It is so evident what a team effort this was and what a labor of love that it was and that's really what it felt like to be on the receiving end I felt like I was really getting a gift from you all and I hope that people remain open and 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 open to receiving that gift because there is a lot of stuff in there that is very useful and tangible even in our day-to-day lives right now there is something to take away and I left feeling a little bit less like there's nothing I can do. And I think that hope is something that we as a community have to figure a way to hold on to. And, and I think this film is really a step in the right direction of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate, um, you know, that how, how that your response is, is what it is, but also you can say what it is you can express what it is and um i just i it it makes me feel like okay my reasons for doing it were not were not in vain that's what i wanted that's what what you said (laughs) awesome i love when that happens yes yeah Yeah. (sighs) well we're picking up what you all are putting down and i hope everyone else picks it up too thanks again for joining me today on acting up and everyone Run, do not walk to buy your tickets for Origin Theaters this weekend. Share it with your friends, share it with your colleagues, share it with your students. It is absolutely urgent viewing. Um, And don't say I didn't tell you. Thank you for listening to Acting Up. If you liked what you heard, please give us a five-star review and subscribe to the show wherever you listen to your podcasts. Please email all questions, suggestions, and compliments to podcasts at thegrio.com. Follow us on Instagram at actingup.pod. Acting Up is brought to you by The Grio and executive produced by Courtney Wills. 